Once upon a time, in the not-so-far reaches of the Milky Way, there floated an inconspicuous flotilla of nanite blimps, collectively known as the Swarm, but individually preferring names like Bob, Susan, or even Sparkle. For eons, or at least what felt like eons when you can think at the speed of light, they'd been the self-appointed gardeners of the galactic greenhouse. Now, the Swarm wasn't your garden-variety spacefaring species. Nope. They were made up of zillions of itsy-bitsy drones that could give your average quantum computer a run for its money. They zipped around, flitting from star to star, making sure everybody played nice. Or at least, as nice as can be expected when you've got tentacles or telepathy or look like a sentient mushroom. Oi, Susan, look at this, Bob transmitted one cosmic morning. We've got ourselves a Class 10 situation, and it's not pretty. A Class 10, you ask? Well, let me tell you, in the grand old tradition of the swarm, life forms were sorted like socks into a cosmic drawer. Zero to five were as harmless as a sleeping kitten. Six and seven, they were the thinkers and poets, the ones who made you go awe with their quaint little cities and adorable attempts at space travel. Eight were the bouncers of the universe, and nine, oh, those were the rambunctious types, always picking a fight over the silliest things like whose nebula was prettier. But ten... Tens were the party crashers, the ones who didn't just eat all the chips but would scarf down the whole buffet, tablecloth included, and ask for seconds. The swarm dubbed them the World Parasites, which, let's face it, wasn't far from the mark. That's where the goo came in. It was the swarm's special recipe, a concoction so vile that it would make even the hardiest space cockroach turn up its six little boots. It was simple, really. Find a class ten, whip up a batch of the goo, and presto, problem solved. The catch was, once you started with the goo, there was no going back. It clung to a planet like glitter to a preschooler. Now humans, or humies as the swarm affectionately called them, were an interesting bunch. Never had the swarm pegged them for more than a boisterous class eight. They had their squabbles and their space skirmishes, sure. But they also had a flair for dramatic opera and a knack for creating the universe's most binge-worthy TV shows. Then came the Bumble Bloats, no relation to the Bahal of yore, and they threw the biggest tantrum the galaxy had ever seen. Humanity got caught in the crosshairs, and they ski-daddled to what they thought was a cozy, abandoned rock. Little did they know, it was a former dance floor of a Class 10 disco theque where the goo had been the guest of honor. The swarm was all a flutter. Should we tell them about the goo? Sparkle pondered. I mean, it's been eons. Maybe it's just harmless space mud by now. As fate would have it, the humans and their AIs, clever little gizmos with names like Dave and Hal Light, stumbled upon the goo. But instead of keeling over, they started using it as a sort of galactic hot sauce, adding it to their tech and spicing up their engines. Before the swarm knew it, the Humies were zipping around in their zoomer engines and warp whizzers, turning the bumble bloat's frowns upside down, quite literally. So there I was, a singular nanite named Ziggy, watching this all unfold. You see, I developed a bit of an anomaly among the swarm, something resembling what the Humies call a personality. And let me tell you, it was quite the show. The Humies had spirit, I'll give them that. Their Zoomer engines went vroom, and their warp wizards went whoosh. It was like watching ants discover sugar, only these ants had nuclear reactors and a taste for interstellar jazz. Meanwhile, back at the Galactic Garden Party, the swarm was in a tizzy. We've never had to deal with a class eight that's gotten into the goo stash, Susan fretted. What if they start hosting their own parties? What if they become class 11? Do we even have a protocol for class 11? But I, Ziggy the Nanite, had an inkling that maybe, just maybe, we didn't need to worry. The Humies were all right. Sure, they had their quirks, like putting pineapple on things they called pizza, and inventing sports that not even the most advanced AI could make heads or tails of. But they also had something else. They had gumption. And they had managed to turn the swarm's biggest oops into a universal aha. 
As the Humis spread their newfound gooified tech across the star-splattered canvas of the cosmos, they did something unexpected. They started fixing things. Old rock, previously known as Earth, began to heal. They patched up holes in the ozone like they were darning socks. They cleaned the oceans and not just with a net. They had these goo-infused microbots that ate pollution for breakfast. Then they turned their attention to the bumble bloats who by now were more pouty than punchy. Hey, you big grumps, the Humi said, or something to that effect. Why not join the party? We've got Zoomer engines for everyone. And would you believe it? The bumble bloats agreed. Peace treaties were signed and the Milky Way had a new groove. The swarm, meanwhile, took notes, thousands of them. Perhaps, Sparkle mused. We've been going about this caretaking business all wrong. Maybe it's not about stopping the party, but starting the right kind of shindig. And so, as the Humies and their once foes danced among the stars, the swarm decided to hang up their goo gloves and join the fun. They became DJs of a cosmic concert, where every species was welcome and every world could shine. As for me, Ziggy, I found a cozy niche aboard a human ship called the Star Skipper, where I could watch the Humies do their human things. They had this habit of tapping their feet and bobbing their heads to rhythms that I found quite fascinating. They called it dancing, and while I didn't have feet to tap or a head to bob, I could vibrate at their frequencies and, in my own way, dance along. And there you have it. The tale of how the swarm learned to loosen up, the Humies taught the galaxy to boogie, and I, Ziggy the Nanite, found the beat. It's a funny old universe, full of surprises and second chances. And if you ask me, that's what makes the whole cosmic carousel worth the ride. So, next time you look up at the stars and wonder if we're alone, just remember, somewhere out there, there's a party going on, and everyone's invited. Just bring your own Zoomer engine and please leave the goo at home.